All right. So we are going <laughs> to, uh, we have lots of questions and lots to show in game. My keyboard's sitting right there, and there's really a lot to go over. Uh, we talked about Zephyr Deluxe. I guess one thing we can talk about is now that Wukong Prime is out, the Wukong rework has shipped. Of course, the question on everyone's mind is what rework is next? <laughs> I got back to looking at Vauban this week um, oh, nice. after I kind of put the final touches on Grendel. Excellent. I started going back and looking at my old docs and started having a uh, look at him. So for Vauban, he used to be the king, as we know, and the game's just so fast now. Um, and the king of CC... He used to be the king. Used man. to be the king. Heavy is the head. Uh, do you have any, <laughs> you know, broad... No. Nothing? No. Wait until it's ready? Sure. Got it. Sounds like you need some help. Hi, my name's Ray Torlius, Vorban main and the only true Baruch player. Now, before you ask why I'm making yet another video about Vorban, let me say that this video exists for four reasons. One, because I realize that as vocal as I am about Vorban, I've never really made my absolute thoughts about how to truly rework Vorban very clear. This video aims to fix that. Two, because I wanted to make something different. Rather than attempting to make just a fourth Vorban rework, I wanted to instead deliver my overall thoughts as well as make a large collection of ideas that could spark discussion and branch off into further ideas, so I could create something I would never have to update. Three, because I just like writing down and coming up with ideas. As stupid as it might be to do, just thinking of what if is something I take great satisfaction in. And four, because being the stubborn idiot that I am, I have a glimmer of hope that DE is watching this and thus will use this video to draw some inspiration or at least have some guidance for the ongoing Vorban rework. And so this is it. No ranting, only my pure thoughts regarding Vorban and how to fix him. Welcome to the ultimate Vorban rework guide. Let's begin, shall we? Most obviously, Vorban is in need of improvements, because his crowd control only kit isn't as powerful as it used to be. There's no arguing that. Because the game currently favours damage more than crowd control, it's no surprise that Vorban is falling behind his more DPS capable counterparts. With that in mind, I would say that the best way to make Vorban better would be to give him an additional role. In other words, the way to fix Vorban is to give him some non crowd control abilities alongside his already existing trademark CC. How would it be done? Well, there are two ways. You can give Vorban new damage abilities alongside his crowd control to make him a hybrid damage and cast a warframe. Or you can give him new supportive abilities with his crowd control, which would make him have a more team-oriented playstyle. Now I know that some of you out there are probably not surprised at me saying that Vorban needs damaging abilities, and some of you out there just don't like the prospect of Vorban potentially being a competitor to Misa or other popular Warframe currently. However, please consider the following. Tank abilities wouldn't be very useful on him, mostly because he lacks the stats to be an effective tank to begin with. The closest Vorban has ever gotten to being a tank was when he had his previous passive that granted him bonus armor. But that was a poor fit on Vorban because his base armor was low to begin with. And this passive was actually the only one in the game that forced the player to not play solo in order to benefit from it. Similarly, giving him a secondary role as a healer would be more trouble than it's worth, because Vorban would then have to compete with the likes of Trinity, Equinox and Nidus to a lesser extent, all of whom have been top-tier Warframes since their release. So to suddenly render them obsolete or inferior because of Vorban's rework would only piss off those who enjoy playing those respective Warframes. Nobody deserves to get shit on for years the same way Vorban has. As such, the most logical resolution to improving Vorban would be to give him some damage abilities in order to bring him up to par in today's DPS meta, or some supportive abilities to give him some new things to bring to the table. No matter which option you pick, 
there are some things about Vorban that remain the same. Vorban's passive, for instance, is something that should absolutely not be touched. 25% bonus damage on incapacitated enemies fits Vorban remarkably well, because it helps his DPS lacking playstyle, at least somewhat. Free damage as a passive is something that can't really be complained about or be replaced with something better, especially if it's free damage just for doing your job as a crowd controller. Speaking of crowd controlling... Now we have Tesla. On paper, Tesla is a simple ability, designed to deter and help keep enemies away from you or a specific area. In practice, however, this is not the case, because Tesla suffers from a multitude of problems. It isn't very effective as crowd control because it has a slow rate of fire, and it can't affect multiple enemies at once, unlike most of the rest of Vorban's kit. It has a base status chance of 10%, which can only reach 100% if you charge it up at the cost of additional energy, which makes it become surprisingly expensive for a first ability. Sure, charging up Tesla might fix the 10% proc chance problem, but that only solves one out of many problems. Tesla has a static 40 second duration, meaning that power duration only changes the amount of times Tesla can shock enemies, not how long it lasts, unlike the rest of Vorban's kit. However, because of the static 40 second duration, this means that the number of shocks a Tesla can have is capped, because it delivers one shock roughly every three seconds. And, as I said earlier, Tesla is one of Vorban's only non-AOE abilities. This isn't a bad thing per se, but what's the point of crowd controlling one enemy when you can crowd control, well, a crowd? However, the way to fix Tesla isn't to replace it, but to redesign it entirely. This was mentioned by DE themselves on stream. You know, one of the ideas I'm playing with is like combining the Tesla uh, balls with um, the rolling drones that we have for, as AI in the game. So they would actually roll around and stay with you. So you got like Octavia's little rolling yeah. thing. But yeah, exactly. but the smaller ones that we used to have. I think they were called Nervos at one point. Yes, the if Nervos. If you are old enough to remember what <laughs> yes. that is, congratulations. Yesterday Scott turned to me, where, <coughs> where are the Nervos again? Yeah. Do they oh, still work? What and, are you talking about? Yeah, what so, is your plan? Yeah. yeah, so looking at that kind of thing and giving them, I guess, more utility and basically making more lethal combined with, more you know, with his CC abilities. Yeah. Love it. All right, so there is the conversational. It's shift. a start. It's, it's a start. you know, there's... Using this proposed solution as a foundation for fixing Tesla makes a lot of sense. For one, it would make Tesla mobile, which would make it an even more viable tool for crowd control instead of being confined to a single area. Secondly, the proposed stun lock mechanic sounds like a definite upgrade over the single electric proc every three seconds that we currently have. Besides death, immobilizers are the best type of crowd control in the game, no matter if it's by freezing, sleeping, or stunning enemies, because if enemies can't move or attack you, they're basically useless. Lastly, having an ability that can move independently would make range less of an issue as Octavia and Equinox can prove. Octavia and Equinox are interesting warframes because they're top-tier warframes, yet they possess CC abilities. It isn't just because the rest of their abilities are powerful on their own, it's also because the crowd control they possess is mobile. Octavia's rollables are capable of moving around on their own free will, meaning Octavia doesn't have to position herself near enemies to be useful. Not to mention that having an ability to be able to move on its own allows the player to focus on other tasks and then come back to murder some already crowd-controlled enemies. Equinox's abilities are aura-shaped, meaning they come directly from her. Because of this, all Equinox has to do in order to affect an entire room is to put herself within range and press a button. One of the reasons why Vorban has fallen so hard out of meta is because his style of crowd control is old particularly Tesla. The foundations are good. However, there is obviously still room for improvement. 
Tesla would be a vastly superior ability with the following changes. 1. Give Tesla a base status chance of 100%. A first ability should not have to be charged to become viable. It should be viable from the start. Otherwise, what's the point of burning more energy on your first ability when you have other abilities that, while being slightly more expensive, could accomplish the same task and then some? 2. Give Tesla mobility similar to Octavia's rollerballs, but change Tesla so it instead spawns homing shockers, instead of having one Tesla target only one enemy. This way, Vorban can simply throw a single Tesla and have it do its job at deterring multiple enemies so he can focus on other tasks at hand while not having to worry about enemies coming up behind him, which would truly make Tesla a fire and forget ability, which is what Tesla could potentially excel at. Not only that, but having to micromanage a bunch of Teslas wouldn't be an issue, as having a single Tesla be able to shock multiple enemies at once would make things easier. 3. Allow Tesla to be normally affected by power duration. If I put on more power duration, it should stand to reason that an ability should last longer. Tesla's current mechanic of more duration equals more shocks, when it has a duration that can't be modified, is rather confusing. If for whatever reason Tesla cannot be kept, there is also the alternative of replacing Tesla with a different ability. I believe that the shock properties of Tesla are fine. It's the execution of it that's the problem. Here's an example of a potentially more modern replacement. Shock cartridge. Vaban energizes the magazine of his currently equipped weapon, causing all shots fired to apply an electric proc per hit, but draining energy over time while active. Consecutive procs on the same target deal increased damage. Given that the game currently revolves around dealing as much damage as possible, I figure it would be worth a try to meld crowd control and damage together. Shock cartridge is merely a sample of this. Again, I wish to reiterate that Tesla does not necessarily need to be replaced in order to be fixed. But that doesn't mean it can't always just be taken away for something new and better. You're probably wondering why this has its own section. That's because giving Vorban turrets is arguably the oldest and most suggested community suggestion when it comes to buffing Vorban. Turrets technically already exist in-game, but nobody really uses those rinky-dink Xiphos turrets. In my personal opinion, I do not think Vorban needs turrets. However, I would not be opposed to him having turrets. Mechanically speaking, Tesla is a very gimped turret. It might be spammable, but that doesn't balance out its effectiveness. You could always simply replace Tesla with an actual turret-like ability, especially considering it's long been an idea from the community. But DE isn't quite fond of abilities that, quote, play the game for you. Mises' old pacemaker ability is an example of the type of power they don't want to give to players, because then the game basically plays itself and honestly, it's perfectly understandable why DE isn't so fond of turrets. Turrets are controlled by AI, which is the exact same thing that controls the enemies in-game. Sure, the AI in-game isn't exactly perfect, but that's not the point. The point is that Warframe, a game that is all about having the player engage in fighting computer-controlled enemies to progress forward for loot and other rewards, would potentially suffer if players suddenly had the option to have a computer do the engaging for them. Turrets work in PvP games despite the fact that they're controlled by computers, because they're intentionally given weaknesses in order to make it more fair for the opposing players, whether it be having a delayed reaction time or a distinctive passive noise. After all, how would PvP games be fun if you lost against a calculating yet perfect computer through no fault of your own? Turrets in PvE games are a different story. Because there are no people to go against, turrets in PvE don't have to worry about being balanced or reasonable. However, that brings up a new problem. Viability. If a turret is made too strong, then every player is suddenly going to want to use them. Because, as a famous man once said, Why do it yourself when robots do it better? The meta favors whatever is the strongest whether it be due to dealing high amounts of damage 
or whatever can tank the most damage. If turrets are designed to be literally old pacemaker Mises, then you're breaking the game by giving players a weapon that doesn't miss and doesn't require player input to work. However, if a turret is made too weak, then there's no point in using them. Sure, they might be fun, but fun isn't what people are going for when playing against enemies that deal absurd amounts of damage. Fun is what Ripline and Super Jump are. Not useful, just there, existing. That trait of automation is kind of why people want Vorban to get turrets. It helps that it fits him in terms of theme because he's an engineer Warframe. But it's also because Vorban's kit doesn't directly help him in killing enemies, since the majority of his abilities deal little to no damage. This means that 9 times out of 10, Vorban himself is what kills the enemies, not his powers. That begs the question, if an enemy gets CC'd by Vorban and nobody is around to kill the enemy, does that make Vorban a bad Warframe? Having turrets would sort of alleviate this problem, because 1. Vorban, primarily being a Warframe that's good with defensive playstyles because his abilities have to be prepared, Mine Layer and Tesla, or thrown as a reaction, Bastille and Vortex, would have a new ace up his sleeve to help him do his job, which is lock down and protect an area from hordes of incoming enemies. 2. Having a computer-controlled gun at his disposal would mean Vorban would have to worry less about staying alive and more about where would this be most useful. If he can at the very least prevent enemies from coming up behind him, then Vorbal can focus on doing other things. 3. Possessing a reliable and potent source of damage means that Vorban becomes more useful to his team. After all, nobody will complain about you if you have a turret helping out. There are abilities in-game that can inherit the player's moods, meaning their damage increases even more so. Giving this attribute to a turret would make viability less of an issue. Of course, turrets in Warframe would still have to be restrained. Otherwise, they'd just play the game for us. One possible solution would be to give them a time limit or make it so the turret only activates when enemies are around. That way, players can't just put a turret down and go get a sandwich. I've touched upon this idea with the bullet trap ability I made as part of my second Vorban rework. But even then, it wasn't very fleshed out. The overall point here is, turrets are great because they provide area denial, which Vorban has plenty of but not anything that can directly kill people. Giving him turrets would be a reasonable solution, but that would mean you'd have to make sure they're not overpowered or underpowered, while at the same time ensuring they're not a BRB in 30 minutes ability. Now we have Mine Layer. As an idea, Mine Layer is interesting, because it's a figurative and literal arsenal of tools at Vorban's fingertips. But given that Mine Layer has a high cost for what it offers, it just isn't really effective or even worth it to use Mine Layer. Especially considering that Bastille solves all your problems for only 75 energy. There are two options for Mine Layer. You can either remove it completely and give Vorban a brand new second ability, or you can overhaul it. While Bounce is by all intents and purposes a joke ability, and Trip Laser is marginally effective against only infested enemies, Shred and Concuss retain some potential. Shred is interesting because it's the only ability in the game that directly reduces enemy armor, albeit for a few seconds, without any augments unlike Seeking Shuriken. However, the reason why Shred isn't as good as it could be is because its effective range is relatively small. Its debuff duration is low, and its base debuff is so low that 250% power strength is needed to reach 100% armor removal. And considering that building for power strength on Vorban of all Warframes is a very, very non vorbal friendly idea, this isn't exactly a popular choice anyway. Alternatively, Concuss as a standalone ability would be decent, but it's set back by the fact that it costs 50 energy and it's shoved in with the rest of Mine Layer. Not only that, but Concuss has to compete with Bastille and Vortex, both of which are the most potent abilities in Vorban's arsenal. So it's no surprise that Concuss still isn't used that frequently, even though it's the best ability under Mine Layer. So, assuming that DE wants to keep Mine Layer, how do you fix it? 
For starters, you have to lower the energy cost to 25. It's fine to have mine layer exist as a bag of tools for Vorban, but if it's not significantly cheaper than Bastille or Vortex, nobody's going to care. Considering that Ivara's quiver mechanic is the exact same as Vorban's mine layer, yet it only costs 25 energy to cast, this change really shouldn't be a problem. Secondly, Bouncen's trip laser needs to be removed. Doing this solves two problems. One, it removes Bounce, which is an out-of-era ability from the game. And two, it opens up Mine Layer for two brand new mines that Vorban can use. What new abilities could Vorban get? I'll come back to this later. Shred suffers from a low debuff amount and duration, so in order to make it worthwhile, the armor shred it provides needs to be permanent, not temporary. Not only that, but the base amount should be increased to at least 50%, meaning that reaching 100% armor removal would take 200% power strength, rather than 250%. If buffering shred isn't enough for you, then it can merely be replaced with something better. Implosion. Vaban throws a grenade, which upon contact with a surface or entity, activates, forcibly pulling all enemies within an 8 meter radius towards it and pinning them to the ground. The grenade then detonates, dealing massive blast damage, ignoring all armor and shields. The explosion lights the surrounding area on fire, applying and dealing fire damage to all enemies that step into the zone. The player can cook the grenade, increasing the damage at the cost of draining energy. That, of course, is only an idea, but you get the point. Shred can always be replaced if it cannot be improved. Assuming that DE wants to keep Mine Layer, Concuss is the only ability that does not need to be touched, as having its cost reduced to merely 25 energy is enough of a buff as it is. Alternatively, you could throw out Mine Layer entirely and give Vorban a new second ability to help with his survivability or damage output, both of which are aspects of Vorban that he lacks in. For instance, Phase Plating Vaban deploys a grenade, which upon contact with a surface, activates and applies a protective shield upon all allies that come near it for a limited time. If shield capacity reaches zero while the shield is active, the shield pulses, stunning all enemies within a 10 meter radius and applying a magnetic proc. If lethal damage is taken while the shield is active, the damage is negated. The affected player is immediately turned invisible and gains a 30% movement speed buff for a period of five seconds. The shield is then removed upon this effect activating. Railgun. Vaban throws a grenade, which upon contact with a surface, activates and deploys an automated railgun with the following statistics. 30 second base duration. One shot per three seconds. 25 meter base targeting range. Innate punch through of plus three. Inherits primary weapon mods. Fires upon one enemy within range at a time, regardless of visibility. Palisade. Vaban throws a grenade, which upon contact with a surface, activates and deploys a protective barrier. Allies that fire through the barrier gain plus 25 armor upon scoring a kill, up to a cap of 1,000 armor. Successive kills grant stacking bonuses for a limited time. Base buff duration, 30 seconds. All buffs reset back to 30 seconds upon a new buff being granted. Two kills within 10 seconds, plus two punch through. 4 kills within 10 seconds, plus 25% fire rate. 6 kills within 10 seconds, plus 50% multi-shot. 8 kills within 10 seconds, 75% critical chance. 10 kills within 10 seconds, plus 100% critical damage. Every successive 5 kills, all buffs reset back to 30 seconds. It doesn't have to be one of these per se. The point here is that Vorban wouldn't suffer from having Mine Layer be outright replaced with something new, whether it be an offensive or defensive ability. Personally, I think it would be better to completely replace Mine Layer instead of attempting to rework it, not just because Concuss is the only ability in Mine Layer that has definitive use, but because I believe it would be better for Vorban to have five good abilities instead of three and an all-in-one package. And yes, I did not stutter. I said five abilities, not four. Which brings me to my next point. Definition. Bastille and Vortex have long been Vorban's biggest positives. 
because they're both hard CC and because they're very simple for what they can provide. As good as they are, people often denounce Vortex due to the fact that it's too similar in function to Bastille, since both are hard CC. I disagree with this notion. While it's true that both abilities are similar in what they do, they have differing uses. Bastille is a cylinder that forcibly suppresses all enemies, up to a cap, within the area, no matter if they're above or below the ring. Yes, you heard correctly. Bastille is not a ring, but rather a cylinder. And that's a common misconception. Because Bastille ignores environmental boundaries and has a deceptively large area of effect, it's better in situations where you need to disable a crowd of enemies that you can't reach. However, whether it be because enemies are on a different floor, or because enemies are too far away from you, this is why people who build around Bastille tend to favour having high power range. Although some people believe that Bastille should be removed in favour of a better ability, especially because Cora's Strangle Dome is a better version, I remain firm with saying that Bastille does indeed have a place in the game, not only because it's been Vorban's signature ability since his release, but because there is indeed potential for it to be upgraded, much like the rest of his kit. Bastille Vaban throws a grenade, which upon contact with a surface or entity, activates and creates a containment field. All enemies that enter the field are forcibly suspended, becoming immobilized and unable to attack. All enemy bullets and projectiles that touch the field ricochet harmlessly, having a 50% chance to deal true damage to the nearest enemy outside of the Bastille. You can consider this to be the opposite of Mag's magnetizability. Instead of pulling in allied projectiles to help kill gathered enemies, this ability repels enemy projectiles and converts them into true damage to kill scattered enemies. Vortex, on the other hand, has a smaller range and a higher cost than Bastille but it does not possess an enemy cap, and it pulls all enemies into a single point rather than keeping them disabled but spread out like Bastille does. Because of this, Vortex is better in situations where you need to defend a specific location or area from oncoming enemies, especially if it's an enclosed area such as a hallway. This is why people who build for Vortex tend to focus on power efficiency and power duration. Vortex already has a small range, so it's better to focus on making it a cheap and long-lasting weapon of mass attraction. Because Bastille and Vortex are effectively two sides of the same crowd control coin, I would say that Vorban would benefit from having both abilities in one key. In other words, Bastille and Vortex should both be Vorban's third ability, with Bastille being tap to cast and Vortex being hold to cast, similar to the currently existing mine layer mechanic. Doing this would allow both abilities to remain with Vorban, while at the same time opening up a space for a brand new fourth ability. What could Vorban gain as a brand new fourth ability? I'll get to this in a moment. However, if Vortex is intended to be used as a killing tool instead, it would be much better off being redesigned. You know how Vorban's description says he can dimensionally crush enemies? This is obviously referring to Vortex but it doesn't really match that feel, because it plays more like a spherical vacuum instead of a whirling ball of death. And so, I give you this. Dimension Gate Vaban throws a grenade, which upon contact with a surface or entity, activates and creates a temporal rift. Enemies within a 7-meter radius get sucked in, becoming trapped in a pocket dimension. Only one Dimension Gate may be active at a time. Enemies inside this dimension take a percent of their max health as damage every second. Dimension Gate can be reactivated to collapse, dealing massive blast damage and instantly killing all enemies below 25% health. Enemies not killed by Dimension Gate are instead stunned for a limited time. You can consider Dimension Gate to be the modernized version of Vortex. Same idea, but with a killer twist, both figuratively and literally. As I stated earlier, Vorban suffers from a lack of innate damage, so giving some to his already in-place crowd control would work wonders in this day and age. Then again, 
That's just me. This section of the guide consists of a few of the multiple ideas I've made over the past two years from previous rework concepts and from my expansive vault of hypothetical abilities for Vorban, ranging from damage to supportive abilities. I'd like to restate that these are meant to be used as examples for what Vorban could receive to be a better Warframe. Nothing more. Regardless, let's go over them. Icarus Intelligent Combat Assist Response and Utility System Icarus is Vaban's exalted sentinel and is unique from traditional sentinels because it has two modes, scout and sentry. When Icarus is active, all enemies within a 25-meter radius of Vaban are marked with a target on their head, causing headshots to deal 50% bonus damage. In scout mode, A does not fire at enemies, but follows Vaban like a traditional sentinel. B grants Vaban the ability to see all enemies, regardless of invisibility, and through all obstacles within a 25-meter radius. C. If three enemies or more come within a 10-meter range of Vaban, Icarus deploys a sonic burst, stunning all enemies for five seconds. In sentry mode, A. Anchors itself at Vaban's position, transforming into an automated turret, gaining the ability to fire at enemies but losing the ability to move. B. Fires upon one enemy at a time, with a targeting range of 20 meters, regardless of invisibility. C. Inherits Vaban's primary weapon mods, and for every three kills or assists, its next shot is a guaranteed headshot. Icarus is a proposed ability from my third Vorban rework, and it serves to address two things. One, giving Vorban a turret and or an exalted companion has been a long-suggested idea ever since Korra was released. Rather than picking one over the other, I opted to combine them instead, and Icarus is the result. And two, for an engineer Warframe, Vorban has a distinct lack of area denial. Sure, Tesla can be considered area denial, but in its current state, calling it that is being generous. I imagine that some people would be happy if Vorban was simply given an exalted bursa to control, similar to Cora's Venari companion. I'd be satisfied with that as well, I think. However, if Vorban were to receive a companion, I believe it would best fit him if it were a companion that does not have to be near him to be useful, as he is a rather easy Warframe to murder, meaning he would benefit from having a second entity guarding him. I understand that having an ability that plays the game for you is not the most liked idea from DE, which is why Icarus is intentionally designed as an ability to target one enemy at a time, rather than multiple and that's also why only one Icarus can be active at a time. Icarus is intended to hold down a single area, not an entire tile set. Dust Bomb. Vaban throws a grenade, which upon contact with a surface or entity, detonates, creating a localized cloud of radioactive particles with a 10 meter radius. Enemies outside of the radius cannot see through or into the cloud. All enemies with the area of effect take gas damage every second, and are perpetually afflicted with a radiation proc as long as they remain in the area of effect. Admittedly, Dust Bomb began as another ability from my very first Vorban rework. Lethargy. I eventually forgot about it until I began to work on this video. And it lives on, albeit under a new name. Dust Bomb is intended to be both a defensive and offensive ability. Its defensive traits stem from enemies not being able to see through or into it, meaning that a player could simply step into a dust bomb in order to avoid death if need be. Its offensive traits stem from the damage it deals to all enemies within its area of effect, both from the continuous gas procs and from the damage enemies can deal to each other due to the constant radiation proc. Gas damage is, oddly enough, not really utilized by Warframes even though it's heavily underrated for its ability to deal constant ticks of damage in an area of effect, which can proc multiple times, meaning it can deal tons of damage. In the case of dust bombs, I've chosen to capitalize on this trait by also adding in a radiation proc. In other words, dust bomb is heavily intended to be used to kill, either from the gas damage it deals or from the radiation proc which forces enemies to attack each other. Radial Seeker 
Vabon scatters mini bombs in a 360 degree radius, each of which, upon contact with the surface, automatically travel to the nearest enemy target within 15 meters and explodes, dealing blast damage and applying slash and fire procs to all enemies within a 5 meter blast radius. Enemies take additional damage if struck by more than one blast. Radial Seeker is a simple idea. Vorban lacks damage, so what would be an easy way to fix that? Give him something that deals damage when thrown. However, in order to increase the incentive and power of an ability such as this, Radial Seeker does not have to rely on player accuracy in order to be functional. It merely needs to be thrown, and Radial Seeker itself would do the rest, assuming the player is within range. You can consider Radial Seeker to be the explosive counterpart to Tesla, but with a shorter lifespan. Ordnance. Vaban throws a grenade, which upon contact with a surface, begins to generate piercing ammo pickups, which can be grabbed by Vaban or an ally. Piercing ammo grants the following bonuses to primary and secondary weapons. 1. If status chance is higher than crit chance, current and next two magazines gain 75% status chance, 90% multi-shot, and 30% increased capacity. 2. If crit chance is higher than status chance, current and next two magazines gain 75% crit chance, 100% crit damage, and 3 punch through. Ordnance is intended to complement the biggest damage dealer in the game, the weapons of the player. Thanks in part to the Riven mods we now have, damage output from players can oftentimes shoot through the roof, and so Ordnance is meant to boost that even further, but in a way that works for whatever build the player is using, whether it be critical or status build. Yeah, I know, having an ability only increase your damage is stupidly basic, but there's a reason why nobody complains about having more damage. It's because it does its job consistently. Death is the best CC, after all. On the topic of death, a quick disclaimer. These next two sections are simply a discussion of Vorban's identity being hypothetically changed to something different. Do not take them as this needs to happen to Vorban, as that's not the point. The point is to talk about alternative options when it comes to improving Vorban, rather than simply saying these abilities need to get buffered. Anyways, I know that sometimes trying to improve a Warframe while keeping its original strengths and identity can be hard, but sometimes the best way to make a Warframe better is to just give them an asinine amount of damage, with or without an exalted weapon. Judging by the name of this section, I assume you can tell that I'm implying this rework sample will have an exalted weapon. Therefore, Exalted Engineer is the name I have given to Vorban's potential new identity as a new hybrid damage dealer and caster, with the possession of an exalted weapon. The reason why this variant of a new Vorban chooses to give him an exalted weapon instead of a plain old damage abilities is very simple. Sometimes, all you need to be top tier is a really good gun. Take Mesa as an example. While her baseline abilities are indeed good on their own, her pacemakers are truly what makes her the DSP monster she is. I'm not implying that she would be a bad Warframe if she had something other than Pacemaker, not at all. My point here is that Pacemaker alone is what puts Mesa up there as one of, if not the best damage Warframes in the game. If Mesa did not possess an exalted weapon, would she remain as popular and dominant as she is? That's the idea behind Exalted Engineer, to shift Vorban's identity from Space Batman to Space Punisher, by granting him an exalted weapon in order to increase his damage potential. Now the question is, what would he get? One interesting thing about exalted weapons is that they always match the playstyle and or the theme of their respective Warframe. Mesa being a gunslinger with damage-oriented abilities has dual pistols. Valkyr, being a melee-ranged berserker, has claws. Excalibur, being a swordsman, has a sword. You get the idea. Given that Vorban's kit, or at least most of it, revolves around afflicting multiple enemies with a single ability, I propose that Vorban's hypothetical exalted weapon should be a grenade launcher. I have a few reasons why. As I said earlier, the majority of Vorban's abilities are AoE, with the exception of Tesla and Bounce. Having a powerful weapon that is also AoE 
would do wonders to complement Vorban's multi-enemy abilities, especially Vortex and Bastille. Imagine entrapping a crowd of enemies with a Vortex and then blowing them all to smithereens with a single shot from a grenade launcher. That is what I'm talking about. Secondly, Vorban's abilities are all delayed activations because they're thrown, rather than being traditional instantaneous powers. Grenade launcher projectiles are the same. They have a travel time and a trajectory, meaning that just like learning the throwing arc of Vorban's powers, properly using and understanding the limits of a grenade launcher takes some getting used to. A player that has mastered Vorban's throwing arc would feel right at home with a grenade launcher, with the biggest difference being that the landing zone will end with an explosion. And lastly, explosive weapons are capable of ragdolling enemies, thanks to their innate blast procs. This is essentially a form of crowd control, because displacement of enemies means that a player can interrupt enemy action by simply shooting an explosive at them. Even if the grenade launcher does not kill them outright, the ragdoll effect it applies can provide enough time for Vorban to finish the job. And yes, I understand that some of you out there wish for Vorban to receive an exalted hammer, simply because he came with the Frogger Prime on his release. Although that's understandable, that wouldn't exactly be a good idea, because, like I stated earlier, Vorban lacks the stats and abilities to tank damage, so giving him a melee exalted weapon would require him to either have his stats adjusted or his abilities shifted to be more of a tank. And that's a drastic identity shift that I don't think that's something that everyone would like. To summarize, the Exalted Engineer rework path can be broken down into this. First, make the Exalted Grenade Launcher be Vorban's new first ability. Second, replace Bounce with Tesla. Third, keep Concurse, replace Trip Laser, and either buff or replace Shred as well. Lastly, buff Bastille and or Vortex, my discussion on them both can be used as reference. I imagine that there are those of you that see Vorban as more of an kind of Warframe. In that case, I recognize that some of you out there don't like the idea of Vorban having an exalted weapon, and that's perfectly understandable. If him being more of a destructive team player is your forte, then you might be interested in what I'm about to talk about. Ledger Domain Technician is the name I have given to Vorban's potential new identity as a new hybrid damage and support frame. But instead of having the exalted weapon, his damage comes from the bulk of his abilities. As the name implies, this rework option is intended to be more of an explosive type, which, like an exalted grenade launcher, is designed to deal high damage in a large radius. However, because this rework path is made with damage in mind, it comes at the cost of completely replacing all of his original abilities except Vortex, which I know will ruffle a few feathers out there. Tesla and Mine Layer would be simply replaced by the Radial Seeker and Implosion abilities I proposed earlier. Bastille would be replaced by a new ability, one designed to have mostly offensive uses for Vorban and his team. Sparrow Swarm. Vaban throws a grenade, which upon contact with a surface creates up to four Sparrow Drones, each of which seeks out a different player to follow for 25 seconds, affected by power duration. Sparrow drones possess the following abilities while active. 1. The player's shield capacity cannot drop below zero, no matter the cause. 2. Sparrow drones mark all enemies within a 20-meter radius once every 15 seconds, causing them to take 50% bonus headshot damage. 3. Sparrow drones fire upon the closest enemy to the player within a 10 meter radius. Sparrow drones inherit Vaban's secondary weapon mods. 4. Once Sparrow drones reach 50% of its duration, it gains plus 3 punch through and has its targeting range doubled. The purpose of Sparrow Swarm is to be a pocket guardian for Vorban and his team. Although Sparrow drones can amplify the damage output of the players themselves, the true strength of Sparrow Swarm lies in its ability to provide an entire team at once, meaning its effective range increases the more players are active. Although it is mostly an offensive tool, it poses the ability to prevent shield loss for a limited amount of time. Toxin damage and slash damage can still bypass shields as normal, so this isn't complete protection, but it isn't supposed to be. Ledger Domain Technician is all about killing, 
not protecting. To summarize, the ledger domain technician rework path can be described as such. First, replace Tesla with radial seeker. Second, replace mine layer with implosion. Third, replace Bastille with Sparrow Swarm or another offensive concept I talked about earlier. Lastly, buff Vortex. The dimension gate ability from the Vortex section of this video can be used as a reference. Okay. This is the section of the video that's intended for additional feedback and ideas for Bourbon that are too singular or irregular to be part of a full-on rework or improvement, but still have some merit in being mentioned for the purpose of rework inspiration. Because, after all, ideas spark discussion. One of the ability reworks I've made for Vorban in the past was with MineLayer, where I explored the idea of giving MineLayer a total of seven different abilities, but limiting the player to only being able to use three in-game at a time. This would mean the player would have the choice of using whatever abilities for MineLayer they want, or whatever abilities would be best to use for the situation they plan to partake in. A modular ability sounds weird, I know, but given that Vorban's MineLayer is a bag of utility to begin with, I believe that capitalizing on Mine Layer's multiple ability capacity, but also allowing the player to swap out the abilities for Mine Layer, would be a great idea both for building Vorban in different ways. I don't remember where it was said exactly, but I recall DE stating that turrets aren't exactly a supported idea, because they can play the game for you which, to be honest, is perfectly understandable. The old Mesa was a perfect example of how this type of ability can be abused, so it makes sense as to why turrets aren't as popular with DE as they are with the players. With that in mind, I think it would be better if instead of turrets, Vorban received drones. Here's why. Drones in Warframe are not completely autonomous. Some are useless on their own, and others have a very short lifespan. No matter their effect, the biggest difference between turrets and drones is that turrets can be left alone with a computer to control them, while drones on the other hand usually require some kind of stimulus or input in order to function. For example, mine ospreys don't do their job unless they can see and are in range of you. This is why I believe drones would somewhat fit Vorban's engineer theme, because they can potentially be a very powerful asset while at the same time not being completely game-changing. Not only that, but drones have the advantage of mobility, unlike turrets. Drones can be told where to go and or what to do. Turrets are traditionally a stationary object, meaning that once they're active, they're stuck. Mobility is everything in Warframe, as Octavia's rollerballs will prove. This is why I think drones for Vorban aren't too unreasonable of an idea. The most powerful Warframes are the ones that can affect or kill the most enemies in the biggest possible area, such as Sarin and Equinox. Thanks to the nature and popularity of nuke abilities, powers that are AoE tend to be favored over abilities that affect a single target or two at a time. Because of this, I believe it's important that no matter what new abilities Vorban gets, they must be AoE in some way. Tesla is the weakest part of his kit by far, and the biggest reason for its weakness is the fact that it is incapable of affecting multiple enemies at once, like Bastille or Vortex can. Unless you have an idea for a non-AoE power with a crazy effect or powerful buff, AoE abilities have been and are Vorban's bread and butter. I'm sure you remember Vorban's old passive. In case you've forgotten already or simply didn't know, Vorban's old passive was bad not only because its armor buffs had minuscule effects on his rather low armor stat, but because this passive was literally the only one in the game that forced the player to play with a squad in order to get the most out of it. A player should not have to be forced to play a certain way in order to get a basic effect to work. Not only is that just silently telling the player how to play the game, but that's also discouraging the player to do things differently. No matter how you change Vorban's abilities, do not force him to be with teammates in order to be useful. No Warframe should be only useful with squads. 
Not all of us have friends. So those are my thoughts. Consider me a lunatic for going this long, but it is what it is. This concludes the ultimate Vorban rework guide. I thank you for sticking around for this long, and DE, if you're watching this, I hope you were able to take something new away from this, whether it be a new idea or a different way of going about reworking Vorban. Please don't mess it up. Seriously, myself and other players have been waiting far too long for this, and my fear is that this could be a repeat of the initial Oberon rework. Regardless, I wish you the best, and as always, thank you for watching.